G'day and welcome back to another Fido Daily. Today we'll be revisiting Twisted Fate Mid, uh, talking about the best sort of build options. A lot of his items got changed in patch 14.10, uh, but I'll be showing you what works for me in this game. We'll start off with the uh, the runes. A rune page is pretty straightforward. I'd recommend not running Ghost, uh, but taking TP. And with TP, you want to take Fleet, uh, Absorb Life, or Sustain. Obviously, Coop. Alacrity just because you're on hit. Now second page is what can change. You could go uh, bone plating overgrowth. I feel like that's the safest option uh, with the attack speed shot um, and scaling HP. You can also take second wind if you're playing at something like Huey and he constantly pokes you. And what I like to do every single game as Twisted Fade is I like to buy a sweeper level one and just send it and invade. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're playing APTF or ADTF. Um, you just go into the enemy jungle, all right? Because uh, worst case scenario, you will get warded and you'll kill the ward with your sweeper and you'll have level two off the first six creeps. Fantastic, that helps you win your lane. Best case scenario, you're gonna get a flash. You've got a point and click CC on your W, right? Your W also follows flashes. You know, if somebody tries to flash away, your auto is still gonna follow them and still gonna stun them. So I feel like it's an excellent champion for early invades, especially when you take this bone plating page as well, right? Because that means that you could actually lead the invade and if you get focused by a bunch of people you get the full value from your bone plating and uh, you're essentially a uh, you know an engaged frontline champ at level one uh, if, you, if nothing happens, like there, you know, we, we didn't encounter anyone in the invade, we got the vision that we wanted. Uh, just watch, switch back to your ward, right? Because you don't lose anything from having the sweeper level, level 1 and then just, uh, you know, recalling and changing back to your ward. I think it is nice to have a ward level 3 on Twisted Fate. You know, you can get ganked, especially in this game. I'm playing against Ari Talia. Uh, you know, if you do get hit by the charm, you'll get flicked back and it's just kind of an instant CC chain death. So, uh, good to give yourself a side to lean on. Uh, now, my Zinzel's starting Raptors here, so I'm thinking, why not? Um, Ari's not a particularly strong laner, so I don't lose anything um, from, you know, from leashing him. I think it's pretty negligible. I probably shouldn't be bothered uh, doing this. I probably should have just used this, you know, this card on Ari and started the trade early. But it's all good, you know, um, just because he's going for the invade, he's thinking about the invade. Uh, I assume a one camp invade here, that's what he's pinging for. We should have probably played to, uh, to kind of shoving, uh, start shoving the first wave fast. And uh, do a, do a two-wave shove, uh, two-wave crash if we can, just so that we can invade on the same time as my Zin Zhao. The problem with two-wave crashing, though, guys, is if you do a two-wave crash, the third wave starts bouncing into you, and it's actually very hard to get level three. Like, your opponent often gets level three first, and uh, you kind of lose your own lane. I feel like two-wave crashing loses your lane, uh, so it's only worth it if your jungler really needs it. I think, in general, you just play for your wave state, play for, you know, trading off each creep. Um... I see that my Zinzao is in her jungle at the moment, so I was considering uh, warding bot side, just placing a ward here in river, and uh, defending my, my Zinzao's camps. But then I see that my, my Ari is actually moved towards Zinzao, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe they're late they contesting him, what's going on? So I go back and I try to match her. It's a little bit of a weird early game. My Zinzao just crosses like a psychopath, level two, <laughs> through two mid towers, and solo kills the enemy jungle. So I'm really not sure what's going on in this game. It's very, very confusing. But the, the thing I want you guys to take away from this is do not lose CS, okay? What your jungle is doing, the, these shenanigans, these early game cheeses, it's worth it if you make the most out of it, right? Like our bot lane right now is getting a big CS lead. And it's important that in mid lane here, you don't just randomly, so many people randomly just walk and, and try to help Zin Zhao. There's no helping him, okay? He's, he's in Narnia, he's gone. The best thing you could do is crash your wave, secure the bounce, deny some CS, right? Stay healthy, use this um, as a way to win your own game, right? Use the fact that the enemies are wasting time chasing your jungler to secure your own laning phase, okay? So um, I think it's a good point to make. Now next, we're just looking for our ward. We know that Zin Zhao went topside. Talia has no top camps left. So naturally, it should make sense for her to just finish these camps and go into his his blue side jungle so we're just defending ourselves from potential uh, wraparound if she's there already or obviously um a gank but try to posture like this on tf tf is really great at posturing now the combo when you play ad tf like this is obviously yes when you have this uh, e4 or e3 i guess would you call it e3 or e4 i mean it's the fourth hit um that gets you it, but you only need three hits to get the little circle around you, so uh, we'll just call it the E. When you get your E around you, um, and you posture aggressively, you're of course going to win that trade, but the problem is your opponent's not going to walk up. They're not going to walk up when you have your, you know, your spinny, spinny card thing E around you. So what you got to do is you got to look at your fleet, okay? The best way to trade on TF is when you have two autos stacked on your E, and they can't see that you have your E on you. 
your third auto is on the creeps, so you auto attack the creeps, and then you start walking forward with the fleet move speed, right? And you have that empowered the empowered auto, you lock in a card, and they can't run away, all right? Because you're using the move speed from fleet to close the distance. So I think there's an art to it. You gotta like, you gotta really look down here. And once you have two and 100, that's when you are, uh, that's when you look for the trade. That's when the best trades are. We see that something's happening in river. Our wave is not good. So we are willing to flash here. This is really, really important there, guys. Like I could have gold cutted the Braum, but instead I chose to kill Talia Obviously because Talia does more damage, but it's mostly because I knew that my wave state was bad. I need this play, whether I live or I die or I kill, some, I kill someone, it doesn't matter. I need this play to be over as soon as possible so that I can get back to mid without losing too much farm. Okay, so always commit your flash, you know, if it's going to mean that in the long term, uh, that's going to fix your wave state, right? Committing my flash there earlier means that I can come back, I can crash this wave, it's not frozen, uh, it's not stuck here. Uh, for another wave, and uh, yeah, we do end up crashing it, that's great, we got a little bit of a lag spike, thank you Australia, and yeah, just kind of trying to trying to harass under the tower, I think under tower it's very, very easy to get your sort of empowered E uh, plus a blue card or, or a red card, and you just throw it out, you get your fleet, you know, you, you throw you throw the one auto, you get your fleet, and you can actually easily dodge the tower shot uh, with the fleet after your trade ends. My Zinzao wants to dive. That's actually a really big mistake. Let's actually go back to that, guys, because um, I think this is something that I see in so many sessions uh, with clients, and it's something I do in my games a lot as well, is when, when your juggler wants to dive your lane, guys, the most important thing, the only way that this dive will not work is if you don't have your cooldowns. That is the only thing that can go wrong, okay? You don't, you will overkill your opponent with your jungler most of the time. So the most important thing is this. As soon as I use that card to push one second faster, the dive is not going to work because I don't have a card anymore. I'm on cooldown, all right? So avoid using your abilities right before a dive because when the actual dive is happening, you've got nothing left. You've got no cooldowns left, right? You're in... You, you basically griefing your jungler who's investing a lot of time to come help you um, by just, you know, worrying about things that don't matter. It doesn't matter if you push that wave two seconds faster. It's irrelevant. The wave is still going to crash, and then the only thing that matters is that you have your spells. So, uh, we, we do end up getting the kill, which is nice. Uh, now, we did buy a Retrix in this game. I'm not sure. I was just experimenting. I don't think this is actually a great early game item. I think our recurve bow is always your best bet. Um, just because it gives you more combat stats, and I think early game, you know, once you have tier 2 boots, that's really it. Also, guys, Zerkers are a must on TF now. Zerkers are just way better than Swifties on ADTF because Dagger got nerfed. So if you think about it, uh, Berserker Greaves was very, very gold efficient before this patch already, right? You're getting 35% um, attack speed, and you're paying 800 gold, okay? And and three daggers before, before the patch was like... 36% uh, attack speed, right? So you're getting like 900 gold for 800 gold. Great, fantastic. But this patch, three daggers is only 30% attack speed. So literally Zerkas got, if you consider the daggers a nerf, then Zerkas technically got buffed, you know, by like 20%. So Zerkas is just straight up like 15, 20% more gold efficient because of uh, the dagger changes. So um, I think it's just it's just uh, undoubtedly the best boost on TF. I think uh, the win rate's also reflected if you look at high levels of play on ADTF. Um, Zerkas is by far a uh, higher win rate. Here we look for the Rift, but then we see that uh, this RE has decided to stay, so we just ult on top of her, and we get the kill. Pretty simple stuff, and we're lucky to have a jungle that works with us. I think that's one thing uh, about TF. He's such a great setup champion, um, but oftentimes if you're just left in the isolated 1v1, you're outranged, or you know you get, you get poked a little bit, or it's an assassin that just kills you because he can stat check you but if your jungler involves you in the plays then you can sort of i feel like you always have a good game on on twist of fate here we see that the wave hasn't crashed properly the support left the support wasn't actually um trying to uh to pull the wave so we just want to go and check out see if anybody's on rift we know that ari can't be there we know that brom can't be there so if the jungler was there we could go and uh and mess with him uh, we, we did cancel our base a few times which is a bit unfortunate i think it was better to just kind of as soon as we shoved that that mid wave, we should have definitely just recalled in this uh, in this bush. But I think I'm, uh, my logic was that I'm I'm trying to greed for a full Kraken Slayer, which I'm still 600 gold away. And the most important part, that what makes this what makes this decision really bad, guys, is that we have no regen. So we have no regen, we have money to spend, and we have not full HP. Okay, the full HP, you can say, okay, we can we can write that off with um, you know fleet footwork. We can get back to full with fleet. Great. 
but we still have the regen, so we can't trade, and we have too much money. Okay, so when you're thinking about bases, these are the three criteria, guys. Uh, three tick boxes you're thinking about. Those are the only three tick boxes for basing. Gold, so money, then regen, right? Regen, I can't really put money there, but regen and HP, okay? And if, if you have at least two out of three of these are true, so you're missing HP, or you're missing regen, or you're missing gold, then you need to base, all right? If it's just one, Let's say you have 1.5k gold, but you're full HP and you have full, you know, full, full, full mana. You have uh, full refillable, all that stuff. Then by all means, you can actually uh, greed, stick around at a high gold count uh, because you can still play the land, right? But as soon as you got two out of three, any two out of three, HP and gold, uh, region and HP, whatever it is that you're missing, just take a base. Take a base so that you can be as strong as you can be uh, on the map and actually play the objectives, right? And make sure you're leaning, guys. You know, I've got a my jungler's top side. I've got a ward top side. I'm leaning. The reason why you lean, guys, is not to avoid the ganks. It's actually for this exact reason. You lean to bait your opponent into Fog of War and give you a favorable engagement. You can see here, this was a 2v3, and we're still able to trade one for one because of leaning, right? Because they're walking into a bush that is warded, they're losing vision of us, we can see the full picture before they can and decide exactly how we should use our abilities to win that skirmish. So, uh, yeah, I think leaning is a very, very important concept, but... You know, after that happens, again, um, if there's no pressure on you, always try and greed one extra wave mid lane. I think that's a, that's a really important uh, point as well to make. Just try and greed for as many as many waves as you can, because uh, especially now with season 14, you know, the the lane, the, the the bushes are so far away from mid lane that it's it's very hard for the opponent to actually cheese you. As long as you stand right in the middle of the lane, it's very hard for them to cheese you. We can see here that we're considering this bot play. That's the great thing about TF is you, you don't have to commit for the roam, right? You could just walk a little bit down, see if there's anything there. If there's nothing there, great, just ult. Uh, great, just, just go back to your mid wave, right? And if there is something there, then you can actually look for the opportunity to roam down and ult. I can do the same thing here again. You know, I'm walking down. I'm ready to recall in this bush. I'm not intending on roaming, but I'm moving my camera down just to check. You know, is this a cannon wave? Yes, it's a cannon wave. Is there an opportunity for me to kill bot? Okay, actually, it's not a cannon wave. That's why I cancel my base. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all you have to do. You clear your wave, you check. Okay, do I need to recall? Great. When's the next cannon wave? If this is not a cannon wave, let me just greed one more wave. Too easy. But regardless of what wave it is, you're always constantly scanning the map, constantly monitoring. Is there something for me to do on the map? Is there a lane, a side lane for me to ult to? Because it doesn't cost you anything to ult. You know, it's just you instantly ult there. You kill someone in five seconds and you take that same recall you're going to take anyway. You know, that's the great thing about Twisted Fade and awareness is really, really important. And we do end up TPing down here. This looks like an extended fight. And then we see the RETP. So we get a little bit scared that uh, if we walk this way, we might actually get blind charmed over the wall. We wouldn't be able to dodge it. But um, I think we underestimated how strong we are. Uh, we could have definitely just stuck with our Zin Zhao there um, and uh, actually went a little bit deeper. Now here this was quite unfortunate that we were rooted on the tower and we're in the middle of nowhere trying to survive, trying to weave in and out. I think we could have just gotten out there to be honest. I'm not really sure why I agreed for an extra kill on Ari. I had a bounty so my kill is worth a lot more than her kill. So I think that's something that you should always consider. Uh, when playing the game, when ahead, right? When playing from ahead is, uh, you know, is this one for one worth it? And if it's not, then just run away. Just run away. Just let your teammates clean it up. Maybe she'll die. Maybe she won't die. But the most important thing is that you will conserve your your bounty, right? Um, now, in this game, we are playing against double AP. So, uh, you know, Merc would have been pretty decent here as well. Or just an early Magic Mantle. I think just because Talia is really far behind, I feel like I can build full damage. Obviously, I see that my Kai'Sa is mid lane. Normally, would say, okay... Uh, once the bot tower goes down for either team, that's when you swap mid lane. But obviously, you know, if, if Kai'Sa is mid, then I'll just walk bot to catch the wave. Because at the end of the day, we just need to be farming efficiently uh, to stay relevant in the game. And we see a bit of a fight happening here. We're considering helping them out. But at this point, I think I know that I just want to go back to mid lane. Uh, I don't really want to be 1v2 against Braum. This champion kind of... Uh, completely counters me and whenever you're walking back like this it's always important just to be aware that you could be getting cheesed in this bush you know i think if it was a normal game state if i uh if i if i wasn't so far ahead of ari i would have really thought twice about uh walking that way because it's very very easy to get chunked and then suddenly you have to take a bad recall but somehow my jungler has killed their jungler my jungler has also killed the enemy mid um so it's a bit of an unfair advantage in the jungle um it does happen sometimes but at the same time, you know, when you get these kind of early games, the game isn't completely won. Um, I've played so many of these games on, you know, high, 
high gold permitted champions like Twist of Fate, like Tristana, where you get a lot of plates, you get a lot of towers, and you feel very accelerated, but you make one mistake, like the one I did bought, and you'll lose your bounty, and suddenly the game is back on. So uh, it's important that you actually play correct, you know, correct macro from this point onwards, right? Don't just force random kills. The kills don't matter. Where is the easiest objective on the map? It's here. It's here. It's the two outer towers. So what I do now, all of the cooldowns I have, my flash, my ult, has to be aimed at taking those towers, at taking the, you know, the, the standing gold off the map. Which side should we go, guys? You know, our jungle is top side, so let's go top. Let's go top because we have three people 3v1 here. I'm, you know, I really wanted to dive this Poppy because I feel like we're more than strong enough. You know, we've got the Cassio ult. That's the most important thing is when, you know, when Poppy uh, goes to ult, if you go to Cassio, you can kind of always buffer it with your ult. I mean, you might get knocked out, but you will kind of stun her and then your team could clear her up. So it was a little bit surprising that we didn't go for that dive. It was a little bit risky, but we saw that the jungler was bought. Uh, so it was a guaranteed 3v1. Kind of stuffs our tempo a little bit here. We still get the Rift for free. And uh, we've got our ultimate coming up again. So what are we going to do? When our ult's up, guys, we're going to move our camera. We're going to move our camera. We're going to ping our intention to our team. We're telling our team, hey, I'm ready to ult. But we're not moving too far away, guys. You see how we're still staying close to Rift? Just in case some shenanigans, their support comes out of nowhere. Uh, RETPs or something like that. We're ready to go to Rift. Uh, but, our, but our main plan was obviously to, uh, to gank bot. We do lag here a little bit. So I think we missed an auto and Braum. Um, happens to the best of us. Now, unfortunately, we actually get TP'd on by Poppy. And our jungle was top. Uh, that's kind of the danger of uh, doing these sort of cross-map plays and trying to win both sides of the map. You can run into numbers disadvantage. That was very nice uh, mind games from me, you know, uh, good good dodge on the Talia E, so uh, Talia Q, excuse me, and yeah, good mechanics. We, we do end up salvaging some kills, but that was sort of the only way we can lose the game. And that comes down to this. Um, let's just wind back the clock for a second. Right here, guys, this has happened to me so much on TF and it will happen to you. So in here, like right here, my, my idea is I just want to ult bot. Okay, I want to secure this bot tower for them and I want to get this double kill. Now it's very, very important that as soon as you press R, you see guys, as soon as I press R here, I have not assessed that somehow there's a Talia right, there's a Talia literally on top of me. I did not think that Talia was there. And if I knew that Talia was there, I would not initiate this bot play, right? I would just, I would press R and I just wouldn't go there. I would be like, I would ping my team back. I'd be like, guys, if we can't kill this guy in five seconds, they have Talia coming, they have Ari coming, everybody's coming here. So make sure that when you play TF, you might have a preset idea of what you're going to do with your ult. But once you actually ult and you see the updated positions of everybody on the map, don't be ignorant like me, right? Actually assess, is this call still correct? And if it's not, then adapt, all right? Evolve your, you know, your understanding of what to do at that point in the game because you have the full picture now. You have Fog of War is gone, you can see everybody, and so make the best decision, all right? Don't don't tunnel on what you thought was good um, if it's not actually good, all right? It's, it's, it's totally normal to make the wrong hypothesis if uh, you didn't have the full information. And uh, yeah, jumping back to live, we're coming off base, we're very, very strong. We've got our Rapid Fire Cannon, uh, we've got our Kraken, we've got a BF Sword, this is pretty much kind of a dream. Um, yeah, kind of a dream setup here. The only thing we're lacking is crit, I suppose. Um, the fact that Kraken doesn't give you crit anymore is a little bit disappointing. Now, one item that I thought was really good in TF, but I haven't tried it myself, maybe you guys can try it and let me know, is uh, Phantom Dancer. Because Phantom Dancer gives 12% move speed now. So in my head, it's like, oh, TF really likes to abuse range with Rapid Fire. He likes move speed. Why not build PD? Uh, so that's what I was thinking. Um, I haven't seen anybody go it yet. I think maybe next patch, uh, Infinity Edge is going to be nerfed. And uh, maybe Infinity Edge becomes less of a priority on TF. But I think for now, your third item should just always be Infinity Edge. It just does way too much damage, guys. It's way too gold efficient. Uh, as long as you have one crit item, you know, before it, as long as you have 50% crit at least, uh, Infinity Edge is just the best item in the game. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, and yeah, I mean, just never group with your team. That's the biggest thing on TF. Whether you have your ult or you have your TP, that's, that's the reason why I always take TP. Uh, you know, TP early game guarantees your lane. But in late game, it also means that instead of waiting 200 seconds for your ult, excuse me, you can actually uh, continue playing the exact same way, uh, except just relying on TP to join your team, all right? Because you're a very strong duelist. Um, it's very hard to lane against you because you have so much range with Rapid Fire, you can just constantly chip away uh, at whoever it is, you know, Orianna or any, uh, any other mage that you might consider to be long range. As long as you've got that Rapid Fire on TF, you can actually side lane quite easily. Now we see that something's happening on the map, and uh, we're happy to join in. We just wanted to guarantee the tower. 
Um, this is also one th one thing on TF is even if the opponent has flash, as long as you port right on top of them, your rapid fire auto will pretty much always follow them, uh, regardless of the flash. Um, you just get a free summoner on top of it. And yeah, I mean, TF, it's a lot easier to play TF uh, from flanks. I feel like if you ult behind people, it's a lot easier to actually have impact than if you play front to back. It depends on the draft, of course. It depends on whether they have, you know, spell shields or um, a champion that can tank your gold card in this game. Specifically, they have Braum, right? So if I'm coming from the front, you know, I throw a gold card at someone, Braum just puts up the wall. And that's, that's sort of it. So it's a lot harder to have an impact. It's much better to enter a fight late on TF, ult behind once a lot of their engage tools are gone and uh, sort of pick the squishies off because you can absolutely one shot people with this build. You're not, you're not quite the, you know, the blue card 100 to zero, but I'd say, you know, three, four autos, just get your Kraken, uh, get your E, your E proc and uh, yeah, people will die. The squishies will absolutely die. We finished our infinity edge. After infinity edge, you need something defensive. Now your two defensive options uh, on TF are BT. Uh, I think BT is probably the best item in this game specifically. They have double AP and I was like, oh, I mean, they technically have like three AP champs and I was like, whoa, I still don't have any magic resist. It's 20 minutes, you know, so I just went with uh, with QSS. Uh, definitely good value here against both the charm and the uh, the Talia flick. And mostly the charm really, because if you, if you just QSS the charm, the flick will miss. But if you don't QSS the charm, then you might get one shot by the flick. Now we see that our team is making a play bot lane, but there's actually nothing for us to do. Like, this Ari already looks dead to me. Uh, so I just decided to TP on the other side and, uh, you know, start pushing, pushing the map. And the question that you have to ask yourself on TF is which one of these champions, so this Ari, can Ari beat me or can Poppy beat me on the side? And if neither champion, if neither Ari or Poppy, if neither mid or top can beat you 1v1, then you are never leaving side lanes on TF, okay? But there's going to be some games as well where you're playing against something like Jax. You know, the enemy team might have, uh, like, Jax Talia. You play against Talia, you can't really make progress. She just clears the wave and she, you know her wave player outranges you. You play against Jax, the guy could just jump in you and kill you. So in those games, you might actually consider walking mid and you know doing some ARAM shenanigans with your rapid fire, right? That's the great the great thing about this build with TF is that you have options, you have range, so that you could just group on the mid wave and try and pick somebody off. Uh, so you really just have to assess. Just ask yourself, do I win the side lane? And if I win the side lane, it doesn't have to be like I can kill the other guy. You know, it could just be like um, I can make progress, I can chip away at the tower, I can do a quarter of this inhib tower 1v1 per wave. And then eventually you'll get it, you know, you're, you're making progress, you're, uh, you're winning the game slowly but surely. So as long as you can either kill them or you can make progress, just go side lane. If not, happy to group mid and play front to back, throw some cards, see if you can blow somebody up. Um, I think at this point in the game it's really important that you, you know, you get some lifesteal. Because uh, if you don't have lifesteal, obviously fleet does help. Um, but having a little bit extra life steal, I also think that uh, Absorb Life is such an excellent rune. It is actually getting buffed next patch, which is pretty shocking to me because I feel like when I press tab, the numbers look good for Absorb Life. Like Absorb Life early game does more than Fleet, and of course late game it does get outscaled by Fleet, but I mean Fleet is an actual keystone, and Absorb Life is just a basic rune. So I, I mean, I, I think the Fleet should be stronger, right? It, it makes sense, so... Um, this build might even be better next patch, right? Next patch, of course, Infinity Edge is getting nerfed, but we might see different build variations. We might see a Phantom Dancer, kind of like super fast build on TF. Maybe you go Phantom Dancer Swifties. Um, who knows? Uh, but uh, yeah, I think TF is definitely in a pretty good spot. Um, obviously, the AP builds are also good with uh, with the Rod of Ages, with Lich Bane here. We're trying to sync the waves, right? We're just not, we're not pushing. We see that this wave is in line with us, but this wave is a little bit behind. So we're just trying to, uh, you know, pressure all three sides of the map at the same time because if they have waves pushing in from each angle then they can only commit so many players towards us here we get a little bit impatient we don't actually wait for our mid wave um and the ari does engage on us we we flash the initial charm we could have tried to uh, qss the charm but the problem was i was a bit afraid of poppy uh, flash ulting me there into the e uh cc chain i think that's the only way we can lose so and then once we get on the back line like i said it's it's just a dream a dream scenario for tf you're hurting everyone, you're one-shotting things, it's it's really a lot of fun, so yeah, give this build a try guys, maybe try Phantom Dancer as well, let me know how you go with it in uh, your games.